Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of July 19th, 2021. This is episode 113. And um, this week we've got four different topics. The first one is the Blue UAS program. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring Haya from Drone Excel and we're going to have a discussion on this. The next thing is a scream tracking drone. For all of you that are a fan of horror movies, this could put an end to your horror movies because now drones can come to the rescue. We'll talk about what this is all about. Uh, we'll talk about a drone rescue that was recorded by a drone and also by one of our students. Uh, he shared this a while back and it's actually happened to make the news, so we'll talk about it some more. And then lastly, we'll talk about some upcoming uh, industry events that we're going to be attending. So let's get to it. And the first story this week comes from the Department of Defense, and there was a report on the uh, Blue UAS program, and we've talked about this program in the past, something that uh, was put in place so that drones coming from certain countries of origin could not be used by the government. And so to talk about the story, I want to bring uh, Haya from Drone Excel. You guys are familiar with Haya, and uh, this is going to be our weekly segment from Drone Excel, uh, providing us information that they found out. So, Haya, welcome to the show. Hey, Greg, thank you for having me on the show today. Yeah, this is a uh, very interesting story. The Financial Times got their hands on a report from the Pentagon that states that the blue SUAS drones, those are the drones that supposedly do not contain any uh, foreign made parts, specifically Chinese made parts. Uh, are eight to 14 times more expensive than other Chinese drones, specifically DJI drones. Now, that's pretty outrageous, eight to 14 times more expensive. And that's not uh, the only part of this problem. The other part is that, uh, and I quote here from the report, that using only blue UES, uh, SUES systems has reduced the sensor capacity of the Department of the Interior by 95%. These drones have been specifically developed for military purposes and are only suitable for other applications in 20% of the times. So not only are these drones significantly more expensive, eight to 14 times uh, so, they're also incredibly less useful for other state departments, such as the Department of the Interior. Now, we, we spoke about this in previous shows as well, so that the blue SUS drones are, are significantly more expensive and uh, said that basically what they've created is a market protection system that allows them to charge higher price prices and basically at the same time uh, deliver inferior products. This, I think, for, for, for this week is at least one of the most important uh, pieces that we covered on Drone Excel when it comes to, uh, to drone news. Yeah, and so this is interesting because it looks like the U.S. government kind of shot itself in the foot by uh, grounding the entire fleet of, of all drones. And then all of a sudden they're like, well, use these drones. And then it looks like all the departments are saying, well, this is good for the military, maybe, but this is not good for what we do in other uh, parts of the government. And so... Uh, you know, that we, like you said, we've we've talked about this before, and this I, I don't think this comes at to any surprise to anyone. A lot of people in the industry have been pretty vocal about the Blue UAS program and the fact that, uh, that it's just not there. There's people that are flying these drones are saying that they're just not up to the standards where they should be. So. Um, the the interesting part about this is uh, the there are several reports that actually cleared DJI not too long ago uh, from any issues that we've seen in the past. Right? Can you talk about more about this? Yeah, I think the the first one that came out was Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, who came out with a report that's a, a high end consultancy firm, and they basically confirmed that if you set up a DJI drone in the correct way, your data is actually safe and it stays on the aircraft. And uh, if you go a little further back in time, then you have the partnership between the Department of the Interior and DJI uh, developing the government uh, edition for two different DJI drones. And these are basically custom built for uh, the Department of the Interior to meet all their requirements. And the Department of the Interior actually signed off on these drones. So back then, these drones were, were good to go and of uh, until, of course, everything changed about two uh, one and a half, two years ago, uh, when Chinese made drones were, were basically outlawed, if you will, for, for federal use. And the problem there is, is also that if the federal government stops using them, it trickles down because it also means that police departments, fire departments and other state agencies cannot use federal money to purchase these kind of drones. And to make this story even more interesting is that if you look at the blue SUS drones, and I'll, I'll list them for you, they're the... Uh, uh, one is from Alt Altavian, Parrot and Navi USA, the Skydio X2, Teal Golden Eagle, and the Vantage Robotics Vesper. Four of these five drones still contain parts that are made in China. Yep. 
you spend more, you get less, there's less competition. These drones still contain parts made in China. So if, if that's the, the, the real concern, then you still haven't fixed that part. And then, uh, and we don't have any concrete information on this, but if you look at Skydio and the way they weren't able to fulfill all the orders from consumers, you wonder if some of these drone manufacturers, including Skydio, might not also have uh, a problem with the ability to deliver the drones in the quantities needed by the government. Uh, I think the Department of uh, the Interior at one point had uh, 800 drones that they were using. So these these agencies don't buy drones by, by I don't know, by five or ten at a the time. They buy them probably in much larger quantities. So these blue SUS uh, manufacturers also need to be able to deliver. And again, we don't have any conf uh, real data on, on their ability to do so, but some, some signs indicate that that might not be so easy for them. Yeah, and the report that I saw also says that a lot of these agencies are basically deciding to not use drones at the moment because they can't do their job uh, because they don't have the drones to do the actual capability, you know, to do exactly what they want to do. Uh, was there more details on, on that? Yeah, uh, in, the, in the same memo, the uh, officials from the government warn that uh, a lot of their work has come to a standstill because fewer drones can be purchased by the Department of the Interior. And I quote here, the current situation makes it almost impossible to carry out our statutory management tasks, including mapping and protecting large natural areas. So yep. again, it, it, it creates all kinds of problems. And I think if you, if you look at the core of this situation, I don't think the solution is to ban products, doesn't matter if they're drones or not, but to ban products based on country of origin. I think what they should do instead is you, you define standards to which a product needs to live up to, uh, in this case drones, and you say, okay, if your drone meets all these requirements, then your drone is approved and we'll test it to make sure that it does. But if it does, then these are, let's say, certified drones that can be uh, safely used by, by government agencies. And uh, I think that's a much smarter approach. And then where the drone is manufactured or assembled or, or built, then that shouldn't really matter anymore. And also, I saw this morning that there was a response from the American Drone Alliance uh, that was responding to that report. Did you, did you read that? And can you tell us more about what they said? Yeah, I saw their statement earlier today. Uh, American Drone Alliance, that's a group that includes uh, Skydio. I'm not sure if all the other blue SUS uh, companies are in there. I suspect most of them are. Um, I'll, just, I'll just quote the last part of it, which is kind of interesting. They say that uh, there is no question that Chinese-made drones are, ser are, are a serious national security risk. The threat from DJI, Autel, and other China-based drones stems from their obligation to comply with any and all Chinese Communist Party requests for information under Chinese national security law. DJI's close relationship with the CCP is bro uh, broadly known, and their role in supporting abhorrent human rights violations against the Uyghur people earned them a place on the Department of Commerce entity list late last year. Against that backdrop, it would be unconscionable for government agencies to use drones that provide the Chinese government a pathway to infiltrate US networks, steal confidential information and place our national security at risk. So the American Drone Alliance uh, did not spend uh, or waste a minute uh, to come up with their response. This is it, it's pretty aggressive, I would say. And it's basically the same old song. Uh, what they do not mention is that four of uh, the five blue, uh, blue SUS drones contain parts made in China as well, including even motherboards, I believe. So yeah. if, if country of origin is the real problem, and if you wanna solve that by drones that are not made in China and don't contain any parts made in China, then four out of the five uh, blue SUS drones, and I believe Skydio is one of them, would also not comply. So it's a, it's a little hypocritical. Yeah, I think it's an interesting response. They, they didn't really bring up the, uh, the fact that these drones are expensive and, and don't provide what they need to provide to the agency. They're just using the, the Chinese thing. And you know, I wanna make it clear to the listeners, uh, we're not anti-American drone companies at all. Uh, I believe it's a good thing if we can compete at that level, but I think there's a different way to compete. And I think we need to be able to provide a, a product that's better, if not as good as what you can find uh, anywhere else. So this is a, this is an interesting conundrum in the way because uh, because we do wanna get away from, uh, from, I think, having drones coming from other countries. It doesn't matter if it's China or France or whatever it is, they need to be coming from the United States. 
And, uh, and I think this is something that the industry has been trying to tackle for a while. And, uh, and I don't see an answer in sight, especially after this kind of report, unfortunately. So we're all for American manufacturing and we do want them to, do, uh, to have a good product because we all benefit from it, obviously. But I think at this stage, it's, um, it's, th th there's some more efforts that need to be put in from, uh, from these manufacturers. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're pointing that out. I mean, uh, unfortunately, DJI is, is the only massive uh, drone manufacturer in the drone industry. I mean, uh, I wish too that there were uh, more competition and uh, other companies out there coming up with, uh, with new products. I think that will be better for everybody. Um, I think the focus on China is very political and it's a very sensitive topic. Um, I do not believe that banning products based on the country of origin is the right approach. I mean, look at your security camera, cell phone, laptop, uh, <laughs> fridge, yep. TV. I mean, a lot of stuff is made in, uh, in Asian countries. So I don't think that's a solution. I think we need to work towards a set of standards and say, if your drone meets all the requirements, then it's safe for use. Then it's approved. Yeah. And I think Rendell from uh, Hotel had mentioned this before, the, the fact that, you know, uh, Parrot is a French company and uh, and other companies are from, from other countries uh, doesn't, you know, the, the country of origin, like you said. Well, Haya, as always, thank you for the discussion. I think uh, we will find more information about this. I'm sure this is not the end of it. And then uh, we'll see you next week for another Drone Excel segment. So thanks for joining. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, the second story this week is a screen tracking drone. And what in the world is this? And this is actually a great idea. If you think about search and rescue, what are search and rescue looking for? They're looking for people. And sometimes it is hard to find people in the middle of nowhere, but if these people are on the ground screaming and asking for help, then we may have the ability to find them by using uh, microphones that are placed uh, strategically on the drone itself. So uh, the microphones would be placed in different locations. They are directional microphones, so they would be able to find out where the screams are coming from. And based on that, uh, the drone would have the ability to basically drive to or fly to a specific location to go find. And this is, would all be done uh, using, uh, using a software that would recognize where the sound is coming from and then getting closer to find out what's going on. So uh, this would be great for uh, rural, urban search and rescue, probably more rural where things are a little bit more quiet in terms of ambient sound. But uh, I think this is great technology. I kind of joked about it early in the introduction, but uh, this, is, uh, this is something that could be great. The next thing is something coming from one of our students, actually. Uh, uh, Thad is his name, and he was at the beach with a, a friend, and the son decided to go in the water with like a, a boogie board, you know, like a, a, a short surfboard to go play in the water. And then he heard a, a mother and their and her son screaming in the water. So uh, decided to get into action and go and help them and actually ended up rescuing them and, and giving them the board so they could get on top. Uh, both of them were struggling pretty badly. It looks like uh, rip current, if, if for those of you that live in coastal areas or have been in coastal areas, the rip current can be pretty strong and difficult to, to fight against. So this kid was able to finally bring everybody back uh, on shore and, and safely. So uh, this was all captured by our student, Thad, who was there uh, just actually practicing active track on his drone. And then he ended up catching the entire action. So. And the last thing this week is the commercial UAV Expo that's going to happen in September 7 to the 9th at uh, the Mirage in Las Vegas. Jason and I will be attending. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on over there, primarily geared towards the industry, so geared towards the, the commercial world. Uh, we'll be going around and, and talking to people. Uh, if you want more information, expouav.com down in here. Uh, topics include construction, energy and utilities. You have information about the forestry and agriculture, uh, infrastructure and transportation, mining, aggregates, public safety. Uh, uh, drone Responders actually has a public safety event going on at that time. So if you're in the public safety world, something that you want to be looking into. If you're in the Vegas area, let me know and maybe we can meet up at the conference or outside the conference or something. So uh, all of our students out there or followers, uh, just, uh, just let me know. All right. This is all I have for this week. As always, like, subscribe. Uh, this is, uh, for a lot of you, the source of news that you get every week. And, uh, and a lot of you let us know in the comments, so we appreciate that. Uh, we're proud to be the source of news that gives you fresh news, not news that's a week old or two weeks old, like a lot of other people do. So uh, thanks for watching us, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.